All right, let's take a look here. All right, everyone, I am just going to go ahead and add everyone in. Here we go. I'm going to admit everyone in now. Guys, just so you know, this is going to be a group video call. Uh, glad to see everyone joining on. Uh, just make sure that your microphones are muted. Let me tell you how that all works. Um, I'm just going to start admitting everybody into the chat. Hi, everybody. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and turn your video on. Um, there's a little video at the bottom left section and in the top right section, you're going to see a um, little button that shows like four little buttons. Um, so you, or like a bunch of buttons. So you want to go ahead and add those on. Hey, Sama, Kate, okay, just lean. Nice to see you guys on. Um, so I'm just going to be adding people on. Um, I realized I put a weight room in, so that means I have to admit everyone first. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> um, okay. So everyone that's here, uh, the way to turn on your video and mute your sound is you want to go ahead and on the left bottom hit start video and then there's also a mute button right there so you want to mute yourself um, i'm going to wait a few minutes just so everyone can get on um, but in the meantime guys i'm super excited to see everybody here um, you know for me this is just as amazing just because i need just as much connection i'm a hundred percent extrovert and so um, having this time alone has given me the power to connect through um, you know with you guys and just to let you know I have never done this before uh, people that have been inside my company worked with us or uh, has been part of my program has never seen me do something like this um, but I decided just with everything that is going on right now and the amount of stress people are under and the amount of things that are happening I found that I wanted to try something different and new to bring us all together. Um, so I'm super glad to see everybody on. I'm just going to do some quick shout outs uh, to people and then I'll tell you how we're going to structure this meeting real quick. So I uh, just want to say hi to Aperva, Archit, Chewy, Gayatri, um, Jiwoo, <laughs> Helena, Jesseline, good to see you, um, Gavya, Kushi, Lasya, uh, Lily, Long, Michelle, Natalie, Navaz, Omkar, Peter. Uh, Risha, Roshni, Savaira, Shrita, Samak, of course, uh, Yoshini, and Kathy. Um, so glad to see everybody on. So um, what you'll see as well is once you hit gallery view, which is in the top right corner, um, you'll be able to see everyone's face. So everyone who's not showing their video, I'm not sure why you're not. Um, I try to make it very clear this is a all group video call. So please don't hesitate to show your face. We want to connect and see everybody here. So if you can uh, turn on your video, that would be awesome. We would love to see each and every one of you guys. Um, what I would also love to do is let you guys know there is a chat box um, that is um, at the bottom. It says the word chat. Click on that. If everyone can type in um, what city, state, or country you're in, go ahead and type that in as well. Um, we'd love to uh, know where all of you guys are from. Perfect. Okay, so we've got some people from New Jersey, Houston. Just so you guys know, I am in Houston right now. Any of my Houstonians, I'm originally from Houston, Texas myself. Uh, we've got California, Cupertino, Fremont. All right, let's take a look here. He, Roshni's in Houston too. For all my Houstonians, which school do you go to, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I'm from Houston originally, so I'm just super curious there. Californians, feel free to share which school you're at as well. Bel Air, cool, have lots of friends from there. Um, cool, okay, so we're getting a lot of people in. I'm gonna wait two more minutes before I get started. Everyone, while you're on this call, I would love for you to make sure you have a glass of water, if you have one near you, if not, will be a great time to get some hydration in during this call. Um, and what I want you guys to do as well is I want you to think about uh, what are the things that we're gonna do on this call is I wanna answer any questions that you guys have right now just to support you as much as I can. So if you do have questions, I want you to think about what that question is or two or five questions, whatever it is, and I want you to write it down. And there's a reason why I'm doing this. See, a lot of people, especially in the 11th grade right now, are feeling really confused. I've had some students say, do I have to retake 11th grade? Which by the way, that would be horrible. I mean, let's all be real, this was not an easy grade. I cannot imagine redoing it. So there's a lot of confusion around it. 
So what I want to do on this call is I want to go ahead and make sure that we are answering those questions that you may not be getting answers to from your school specifically um, and that you need, you want that type of answer, you know, from me or the types of answers I can give you so that you feel like, okay, this is something that's going to bring more peace or more understanding. Um, in the meantime, what I would love to know, if you guys can put into the chat box, um, how did you hear about me? What have you watched of mine? Have you read my book? Have you seen my Facebook lives? Have you gotten emails from me? Have you, um, you know, how have you heard of me? Awesome. Um, oh, Navaz read my book. Oh, that's cool. I want to see where Navaz is. That's pretty awesome. Let me see where you are. Navaz, do you have your video on? Maybe, maybe not. No, no video, Navaz. I'd like to see you. Oh, camera's not working. Okay, <laughs> no worries. Okay, so we're about four minutes in. I'm just going to wait one or two more minutes before everyone gets on. But remember all your questions write them down and you should have a notebook next to you because we're going to go over some really cool things. Now, what I'm super excited about this is the fact that, I mean, I guess my question is how many of you are part of something like this where you can talk with other high achieving, smart, awesome 11th graders that are across the country right now? Type in yes or no if you're part of something else that looks like this. I'm just super curious. Um, because a lot of times, a lot of us, like I'll tell you, for example, me, I am a high achieving student. I was, at least I'm not in school anymore. Now I help a lot of kids in school, but I've helped so many people. But one of the things is like, sometimes when you're at the top, it's kind of lonely up there. Like everyone look, looks for you for homework answers or they're asking you a bunch of questions. So that's why I wanted to do this call of all my really top kids that are within my network through email, Facebook, social media, so forth to do this type of call. Um, okay, perfect. So I'm going to continue to add people on, but what, how this is going to work is, hi, nice to see you. Hi, Helena. Great. Love the videos, everybody. I love the videos. Okay. So what we're going to do uh, for this call specifically, and I'm going to go ahead and chat it out. Um, please turn on your video. Plus, if you have a question, you can physically raise your hand and I will unmute you. If you cannot show video, you can, uh, you can, um, yeah, you can just chat your question. Make sure you send it to everyone. Perfect. So the goal of this call, everybody, is for us to have a dialogue and conversation. I also have a few people on that are my tried and true students who've worked with me, students who are working with me, and students who are already in college to talk with you a little bit about their experiences and what's going on with them. And I'll be asking them some questions so you can learn from them too. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and get started. Um, if anyone has a question, you just have to do this and hold it up. And then I will pick on you um, as we go around. Um, and if you aren't showing video, because I know we've got a lot of people not, you can chat your question into the chat box. Okay, so Savira, I see your... Um, your question, Roshni, I see you too, perfect. Okay, so Savaria, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you right now. Let's see. Okay. Hi so guys. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Good, where do you live? I'm from New Jersey. Okay, awesome, okay, great. So what so, is your question? My question is, um, so I go to a private school and we don't really have a counselor. Mm -hmm. So um, my question was, um, because I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be going to community college. I've taken the SAT once, but um, I didn't get a really good score, but I did get over 1,300. So um, my question was, do you think I should take it again? Because like I know community colleges have a thing where like you don't, they don't really look at your SAT score and then you can transfer from there. Great question. Okay, anyone else have questions about the SAT, ACT? Raise your hand. Okay, got some questions here. Perfect. So relevant to everybody uh, that's curious about it. So in terms of community schools specifically, I mean, a 1300 or above is already an incredible score. Uh, just so you know, for that type of school, um, I would not be, if that's where you want to go as your first step, I would not be worried about taking it again. Okay. And also, there's a lot of schools that would take that score in general. Um, mm -hmm. Second part I want to answer too, guys, just so you guys know, there's four things schools are looking at. 
One is SAT, ACT. The other is your academic grades. The next part is your essays and your application itself and your resume. What are the activities you've done? So those are the four parts of the application. So just remember, like, it's not just your SAT, ACT score that's going to get you in. You know, there's hundreds of thousands of students that have the perfect GPA or the perfect test score, but on the essays and resume, they're not as interesting. So just remember that in terms of, you know, the application process of IRA, there's a lot more to it. Um, but if you already have a 1300 or above, community colleges would be more than happy to take you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Um, I'll let someone else go first because I have okay. a bunch. Okay, awesome. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Uh, Roshni, let me go ahead. Hi, Roshni. Hi. Hi, Hello, where are you coming from? I'm from Houston. Oh, where in Houston? Uh, Bel Air. Bel I'm in Westview right now, so we're like neighbors. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so Roshni, what is your question? Uh, so I got an email today that IB exams were canceled, and I was wondering what that meant for me possibly earning the IB diploma since I won't be taking two of my exams this year and possibly not my IA. Okay, great question. So in terms of the IB program, I would definitely reach out to your school counselor about if they're going to extend it to later, if maybe they'll do it in August. Um, there may be delaying these types of things for later. Um, to see what they're going to do. I don't see people that are just going to take a long-term approach like that and say, you don't get your IB diploma. I don't see that happening because right now we're dealing with a crisis in the short-term moment. Um, so I don't see them wanting to just cancel out the whole thing. Does that make sense? But I would go ahead and reach out. I'm assuming you're at Bel Air, right? Okay. Um, which, man, Bel Air, guys, that's a hard school. <laughs> Lots of overachievers at that school. Um, okay, so I would definitely reach out to your counselors at Bel Air about their ways of how they're going to handle it, but I don't see them going ahead and just canceling out everyone's IB there. There would be a, there would be a major uproar at your school if that happened, right? Yeah, there'd be kids, like, throwing a lot of paper. Let's just be super PC there. <laughs> okay, cool. Any other questions, Roshi? Uh, yeah, also, so since we're taking modified AP exams and possibly our courses are being changed a ton, how will that affect how colleges will accept our credits? Because if we're taking classes where we haven't actually finished curriculum, will we still be able to place out of a course in college? Great question. So are you, so in terms of the AP tests right now, they're possibly switching to just doing online tests right now. They're looking into a few things at different schools. So in terms of the APs, they're looking for you, obviously, depending on the school, they look for a five, four, uh, sometimes it's a three credit is okay as well, depending on where you go, but they're looking for those types of scores to get that type of credit, Roshni. Um, again, they don't, no education system wants to cancel out your AP tests because number one, you know, you're in the class. We're basically a month and a half away from taking the test. Now, if it was like August and this was happening right now, then there'd be a whole nother conversation, but they want you to be finishing. And then colleges will be taking that as credit if you scored a certain level on it. Okay. Okay, great. Thanks, Roshni. Awesome. Okay, does anyone else have questions? You can raise your hand. All right, Risha. Hi, Risha, how are you? Um, I'm good, how are you? Good, where are you from? Um, I'm from San Jose, California. San Jose, I know you guys are on pretty strict rules out there. Yeah, shelter in place and everything. Yeah, how are you <laughs> feeling? <laughs> it's okay, honestly. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so tell me, what is your question? Uh, so do you predict that colleges will go like test optional because I've been talking to some people and they think that might happen. Which people are you talking with? Um, we have a counselor at our school and she predicted that, but I don't know. <laughs> Great question. So <clears throat> I know a lot of people think that's what's going to happen. This is how I feel about it. They'll look at your PSAT score. You have a standardized test already. College board has it in their system. My perspective is they'll just go ahead and either ask for a PSAT or something of that nature before they say testing is all optional. Second thing, 
sorry guys, I've been getting a tickle back here and it's not what you think it is. Just <laughs> to be very clear, all of y'all are like, oh, she coughed. No, it's okay. <laughs> just, it's just been a, it's high pollen season where I am. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not used to like allergies at all. Let me say pollen specifically this high. So, okay. They'll either look at your PSAT, number one, or number two, they're going to have a June test. If College Board needs to, they'll have a July test. They have an August test. They need to switch to online. Not hard. They'll do an online time test. I don't see schools throwing out the SAT. I, I just don't. I don't see it happening right now. There's no way. I, w I mean, I wish. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Everybody, everyone's like, no SAT. Hey. I mean, but the thing is, what about everyone that's done well on the SAT, right? Like, does that mean they get a better leg up, right? Like, so it doesn't even out the playing field. Like, let's say a kid walks in with like a 1590 and then you walk in with zero test score. That's not fair either, right? So they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. And I think they're going to do online for the test moving forward, or they're going to, um, so they're going to move online. They're going to add more test dates or they'll take your PSAT score, which I know for some of you, you're like, what? Because you didn't get to technically prep for that. You're like, wait a second, that's not fair. Well, I mean, they've got to find some way to get your standardized test. So just a heads up on that. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Does that help, Richard? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Okay. Sure. So let me tell you guys about that. This is, so this, this viewpoint of like, oh, they're not going to take the SAT this year is exactly why most 11th graders aren't prepping for their SAT or ACT. They're like, oh, I, I guess it's going to be canceled. So why should I study for it? That is the worst strategy I have ever heard in my life, guys. Okay? Hands up. That is a bad strategy. Right now is the time that you can actually stand out, get your time together, lock down some of you in San Jose, et cetera, are not moving anywhere. You should be adding some practice time into your schedule. All that time you were spending going to the movies, hanging out with all you guys here, each other, friends, take 30 minutes a day and do SAT prep. Prep yourself well, right? Um, so what I want to do is I just want you guys to know, like it's, it is just one of those things where it's really easy to like fall into this trap of like, I'll just hang out and do nothing, but that is not the strategy for 11th graders right now. So what I decided to do, I wanted to bring on one of my tried and true students, Samuk. Um, so Samuk, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. So I've known Samuk now for how long has it been? Like, Ooh, like six or seven years. Six or point. seven years. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And Samuk is um, I feel like he's one of my kids, but he basically, um, got into his number one dream school working with me and my team. Um, he's there, he's loving it. Um, so Mook, I want to ask you a question. If you were in 11th grade right now during this time, um, you know, what would you do if I, obviously if I was your mentor too, what would you be doing if you had all this time, if you were in the Bay area, you know, you went to a very competitive Bay area high school describe what you would probably do if you could look back at this time. Cause you are now a junior in college, right? Yeah. A junior. So you're four years ahead of the students that are on this call. What advice do you have after obviously working with my team and, and the mentorship we've given you to these 11th graders now? Yeah, I think it's interesting. It's, it's a crazy time for all of us. I mean, my, my college just got shut down this week. So it's like, I'm now back at home kind of just kind of regroup and figure out what's, what's going on for me personally. Um, but if I was kind of back in high school, I think I'd do a couple things. One is, is like you mentioned, build in more practice time for myself to do kind of those standardized testings. Um, two is I would search long and hard for a remote internship um, with a company or a startup um, just so I'm building experience and kind of doing something that um, not a lot of other kids are really doing. Um, and then three, I, I'd really just start studying the market and studying trends um, to see like what is going to happen. Um, like we're going to, we're about to see decline of a lot of industries and, and, and kind of the rise of a lot more. Um, so I'd be doing a ton of research into like, what's going to be up and coming, what's not. Um, and then see if you can pounce on one of those opportunities, like virtual conferences are going to be all the rage these days, just cause like, you know, events and in-person meetups can't really happen. Um, so can you kind of capitalize on that and capitalize on the fact that a lot of smart, successful people are now at home with a lot more time? And you can easily reach out to them and be like, hey, would you be willing to spend an hour with me um, and, you know, go do some sort of like, like Zoom call like this with a bunch of my peers. Um, so there's different ways to kind of capitalize on this. And I think it's just up to you guys to kind of take, take the moment and see what you can really do with it. 
Absolutely. Um, so Mike, do you mind sharing with them since we've got some students, you know, that are, you know, similar to you in a lot of ways, do you mind expressing just a little bit of your story of like what you were like in high school, how we were together, and then, you know, now what's going on in college for you? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been a crazy ride. Um, ninth grade, ninth grade when I kind of entered high school, um, I knew I wanted to go to Babson, Babson College, the school I go to. Um, it's and like, if anyone's, I mean, if anyone's heard of Babson, type in yes into the chat box. Babson is like one of the top entrepreneurship colleges in the world. Uh, and coming out of the Bay Area where there's so many entrepreneurs, your dad's an entrepreneur, et cetera, this is not a foreign concept. So, okay, so that was your number one choice. Yeah, so it's a small school in Boston, um, and I knew I wanted to go on entrepreneurship, so that's what kind of like the path I went into. Um, I, it was crazy, ninth nice grade, looking back on it, I wasn't that motivated, I wasn't that driven, um, and then I kind of, you know, a couple, couple of lucky things kind of happened to me, um, one being kind of meeting Neha, um, you know, following my dad around in events. Um, and so, so with that, kind of, I was able to, to kind of get more involved um, in my school, and, and, and I just saw in the comments, someone talked about I know, about Isaiah it, so Chang. I like, Isaiah wow. Chang, who is, hey, Isaiah, you know Sumuk. <laughs> That's awesome. Sumuk, you've left a footprint. This is what life is I guess so. Awesome. I guess so. Oh, my God, lots um, of yeah. you got Lindbrook kids in here right now. That's kind of crazy. Um, yeah, I went to Lindbrook my four years. Um, <laughs> I founded TEDx Lindbrook. We ran two events, raised like $8,000 in sponsorships. Um, sold out both events. Um, it was just been a crazy ride ever since. I ended up starting a company. Um, I ended up kind of being on a teen radio show three years in a row. Um, when I got to college, I took over the entrepreneurship community, um, secured a ton of corporate partnerships. I ran Babson's biggest pitch competition ever, giving away $100,000. Um, so it's been, it's been pretty crazy kind of doing a lot of things that I just enjoy. Um, and I trace it all back to kind of my time in high school. Um, you know, working with awesome people like Neha. Awesome. Awesome. And I'm so glad, you know, so like you're, you're, you know, even with our community here, we're seeing even in this small little group, yeah. your, the mentorship we've provided and the, uh, the fact that you were able to leave such a great mark is even years later, you know, and I think that's the biggest thing, right? It's like getting a mentor during hard times can make all the difference in not only standing out in the admissions process, like the things you've done, like people that are four years younger than you remember, you were an entrepreneur, you did TEDx events. I mean, hey, you never know the ripple you're going to create, which is why I love doing this type of stuff. Um, but so look, I'm glad to hear that you're safe and you're, you know, you gave us three really great tips on, you know, how to prepare. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if anyone has questions for Sumuk too, we can go ahead and open that up as well. If anyone has a question, we'll take one or two questions. You can just raise your hand. I'll take a look here. Um, okay, Sanat Single has a question. I'll unmute real quick. Sanat, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi. Okay. Um, so I actually go to Cupertino High School right now too. Um, so it's cool to know that you went to Lindbrook. Um, yeah. uh, I'm curious how you like, got started with uh, starting like TEDx Lindbrook and um, like I'm interested in entrepreneurship as well but actually now I need to look into Babson because I hadn't really heard of that that wasn't on my radar but um, so how do you like how did you begin your journey like as an entrepreneur uh, in high school because I wanted to start something I wanted to start like a, a lot of um, like businesses and things like that but it didn't really pan out but so how did you go about it? Yeah, so I just want to I want to interject real quick on here, Sumuk, just because I think one of the big things just to say about that. First of all, Sumuk is on my team, just so you guys know, in terms of like one of our mentors and coaches, uh, because he's such a rock star. Um, but Sumuk, go ahead and give some advice here, because I think that's the biggest thing is getting a mentor. Right, was huge for you in this process. Yeah, that, that's that's the first. That's basically the first thing I was gonna say. Um, is is and. Awesome to hear Cupertino, two of my best friends um, of all time went there. So I have a very fond place in my heart for that school. Um, and, and actually the TEDx story is interesting. I saw an ad um, on my Facebook for TEDx Saratoga High School, um, which is a neighboring high school. And I was like, whoa, I should do that at Lindbrook. Um, and so, you know, I, I decided to bring it, bring it to Lindbrook and we, we applied. Um, we were actually um, one of two teams competing for the license. We ended up winning out. Um, you'll probably hear more of that story when, when kind of Neha's 
state launches. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, that that was an incredible time for me, just because like it was the first project that I really had leadership experience on. Um, but again, the lesson there is I think just look for opportunities um, and look for kind of um, things and things that you don't think that your school has, right? So so I don't know if TEDx is is, is brought to at Cupertino. I know when I was at Lindbrook, there's a team running TEDx there, um, but you could explore doing something like that. Um, and then and then kind of on the entrepreneurship side, I'd, I'd kind of recommend, um, again, don't force yourself to start anything. I think um, a lot of kids these days get into entrepreneurship as like a cool thing to do. Um, but in my experience, I think like, like, find, like find mentors and people that support you um, and that are willing to invest in you and just spend a lot of time learning from them. And then you'll find that you'll have ideas on your own just through that process. Um, through talking with them and kind of learning and bouncing off of them. Um, and then you'll find that you'll be working on something that you're much more passionate about because you've gone through that process of learning and kind of growing. Um, and I'm happy to, to, you know, talk offline on on strategies and kind of how to do that and, and, and how to, you know, get in touch with really, really cool people that might might be able to serve as mentors. Because um, that's something that I, that I really love and I, I talk a lot about with, with friends, peers, and, and people in high school. Awesome. Did that help, Sana? Hopefully that was helpful. Sorry, I think you're muted, Sana. Sorry. Yeah, that was really helpful. Thank thank you. I would love to talk more too about uh, getting mentors and things like that. Awesome. Yeah, totally. Um, Yeah, and just so you know, um, uh, like I was saying, so Sumik is part of my mentorship program as well, where he mentors kids and helping them with figuring out what their passions are, what their interests are, and then putting them all with the right people. Uh, we've got multiple mentors on our team. I've wanted to include Sumik because I knew there were a lot of people out of the Bay Area that were going to be on this call today um, so that they could see a real live student who's in the trenches, who understands where you're at. Um, but can also be of service and be helpful in a lot of ways. So Simic, thanks for joining. Feel free to yeah. stay on, of course. I just wanted to at least, you know, give these kids, you know, a beacon of hope to see someone from my team and uh, just some of the amazing things we've done together. Both, both, you know, I've spoken on TEDx. You have a love for TEDx too. Um, I have multiple kids now that are part of my program that are doing, uh, that just got the TEDx license at their high school too, which is it's always a ripple mm. effect, which is awesome. So awesome. Okay. Thanks so much. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Anyone else have a question? Uh, go ahead and raise your hand. Jenny, Jenny, here we, Jennifer, sorry about that. Uh, let me go ahead and unmute you. Okay. Jennifer, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Jennifer. Where are you coming from? Um, I'm from California, Southern California. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so I have a question because I'm trying to figure out, I definitely want to do some sort of like action project or passion project, but in terms of figuring out like my like call it they say like you should have like kind of like a theme on your resume like a pattern of things that you're involved in so I grew up doing mostly like performing arts and like dance and stuff like that but for college I want to go into economics Mm -hmm. so I'm not really sure how to connect those two things and like which like how I should present myself because most of my background has nothing to do with like math or politics or anything so I don't want to exclude that though because that's a big part of me, but I just don't know how to connect the two different like parts of my life. Yeah, definitely. Great question. Uh, just some background. I went to Rice myself um, and I was a triple major. One of my majors was economics and I was one of the best hip hop dancers in my high school. You'd be surprised. I have some pretty crazy moves. Um, okay. So I totally feel you on that. Um, and it's interesting. I was a dancer and painter in high school, but I was super interested in business, as you can probably tell, running college shortcuts and so forth. Um, So I would say that one of the ways to do it, especially right now with what's going on, is I would take some time, honestly, and start studying the markets a little bit because they're kind of going like this. And that's a great time to kind of understand, like, what is it that people are talking, why are they talking about this so intensely? Like they're comparing it to the 2008 recession or, you know, what financial crisis, what was that time? Like, you know, the dot com boost, like, I know you didn't live through these times, but you know, you could read through these types of things. And then maybe when you're applying, you can talk about some of these things as like, Hey, you know, I'm the blend of both art and science. And I'm really interested in, you know, the technical and the soft side of things. Um, And we help students with this process specifically of, hey, I've got a lot of different activities. How do I build that, that what I call the admissions narrative, the unique admissions angle 
that's going to make you stand out among everyone else nationally of like, hey, these are the things that I do. This is what I'm interested in. And then this is what I would like to do in the future. And this is why you should accept me. It's a big part of what we do at College Shortcuts. So if you're interested in learning more, um, what I can also do here is add um, the information here. Um, to schedule a free strategy call with our team, but your parents have to be on that line, just so you know, it's parents and students to learn about how we can help you with that. Um, because I do know I reached out for everyone to be on this call um, to be at you'd pretty much the top of your game, guys. All of you guys are part of what I call the unicorn club. Um, you're smart, you're sharp, and you work hard. So to me, it's like, okay, how do we take you from where you're at and then package you so that you know you are able to do that but my quick tip of advice for you right now is i would go ahead and um start studying the markets and be able to speak about that a little bit when it comes to the application yeah. victor sorry if you don't like the unicorn term my bad i'm talking about you guys are part of my genius network however you want to call it you guys are top students <laughs> just letting you guys know uh jennifer was that helpful yeah i do have like kind of a related question too sure. so um, I want to apply to mostly UC schools. I'm looking mm -hmm. into a few privates, but realistically, I really want to end up at UCLA or like UC San Diego. Yeah. And they don't do interviews or like letters of rec. All they do is like your transcript, PIQs, and SAT scores. Mm -hmm. So how do I show like my interests or like things that I've done? Because there's yeah. not a lot of places to show that. There's four essays on that application. Right. But like, I feel like they're not... Like, they're very specific questions that, right? like, I just, I'm not sure how to, like, talk about. Yeah, so we actually work with students on all the UC applications, um, and those essays is a big part of it. Um, we also work with students on building out their resume for the Common App and how to build that out properly. So, and I know the UC has its own application as well, but there are ways to do it where you use what they're asking for to make you stand out. Mm -hmm. um, there are places on that application where when we work with students, it's really about like, how do you look at it from a realistic perspective of the entire application to show your story? Okay. Thank so you. yeah. Yeah. And that's, if you look at it, there's more words on the UC application requirement than there are on the common app main essay. Like there's four essay prompts. That's a lot of essay prompts guys that you can be working on and they don't usually change. So, you know, they're there. Um, so hopefully that helps. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thanks Jennifer. Okay, we've got a question from Kavya, and then I'll take one from the chat after, okay, guys? Okay, hi, Kavya. Hi, how are you? Good, where are you from? I'm from New Jersey. New Jersey, okay, thank you for joining. Yeah, thanks for having this call for us, it's super helpful. Awesome, I'm so glad to hear it. Um, so, my question is kind of similar to Jennifer's first question. Mm -hmm. um, so, something I came across, like, during this, like, time of, like, self-isolation and stuff is um a lot of colleges offering like online courses for free mm -hmm. and um so kind of like Jennifer like I'm really interested in like finance and economics and it's kind of difficult like I have a political internship for the summer but it's kind of difficult as like a high school student to say like I want like a financial internship like you can't like walk into a bank and ask for like a high school internship so right. something I found online was like uh free course that like teaches you like the basics of finance um which is super appealing to me because that's not offered at my school either um so i was wondering like what you think about um that like opportunity during this time and also when we're applying to college what the best way to like present that is that's something. awesome i love this question because i was going to get to it which is amazing so i highly recommend right now when we're all in our own homes and can't go do an activity can't go to a bank and ask you know just some background as well for me um i was like picked i was the only student during my grade level that got an internship from rice to work at goldman sachs so i understand the process of wanting to go into a and at that time it was like the hardest internship to get and it was intense very intense if you wonder where my work ethic comes from it, it comes from working in banking um so what i would tell you is absolutely taking those classes right now is a great way to um explain specifically around like what it is that um, you're interested in, but also taking those classes can help and say, look, during this time, these are the things that I want to be able to do um, in college, and here are ways during my isolation time that I did it. 
So definitely figure out one or two classes that you find interesting. Make sure you find them interesting. Get the certificate. Some of them offer certificates. Even if they don't, you can show completion. And you would add that kind of information to the resume and the essays. So this is like the big part where we come in with students is like, okay, you can do all these cool activities, right? But like, and I'll compare it to like, I'll compare it to like making mac and cheese because that's my favorite food in the world ever since I was in high school. So it's kind of like if you make mac and cheese, but you accidentally leave the cheese packet like for 45 minutes on the pot with no water. Or let's say you make the pasta, but the pasta, you boiled it too long and it turned into mush. So this is what I see all the time with students. Like they either don't write about what they should be writing about in terms of their essays, um, or they don't know exactly how to structure their application, just like you structure a recipe to cook with, right? So that's a big thing to think about is like, hey, how do we go ahead and make sure that, you know, we're really assisting your application process and making sure your schools, the classes you're taking, these extracurricular classes, and then how do you package it in the application essays itself? But I would say as a first step right now, I highly recommend um, doing those classes. Um, don't overload yourself. Obviously, your grades, your scores still matter. But if you have the time, I would definitely take them. And then, you know, if you want to talk with us further, we can help you in figuring out how to take what you've done and, and really put what I call some fairy dust on it. And then when you write the essays, it's like, hey, you know what? These are the kinds of things I'm interested in. Look at what I've done, X, Y, Z here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Thank cool. you. Of course. Um, okay, I'm going to take some from the chat. There's a lot of chatting going on. You guys are chatty, chatty McChatties down there. I'm trying to answer the question. I'm like, what? oh, I need to stop reading. Um, okay, let me take a look. I'm going to scroll back a little bit here and answer some questions. Um, so there was a question about, uh, Lily asked, uh, no, Lily is giving advice, which was rock star, dude. Liked your advice. Totally agree. Um, so she was, someone was asking like, should I take an SAT if I have a 1560 plus Victor? Honestly, you want my honest opinion right now? No, you don't really need to. Uh, that's my viewpoint. If you're making above a 1550, leave it. Um, they need those, they, they may even do something later where like if they have limited spots of who can take the SAT, they may just say like everyone that's gotten a 1550 above, like cannot take the SAT in June, just based on what they're doing right now. Right? So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, a lot of people, if you are planning on taking it in June and you want an SAT tutor, I've got those on my team that have scored uh, above a 1500 and in the high, high scores. If you're wanting tutoring uh, during this time, let me know because um, I know Long was saying math SAT is brutal sometimes. Yesh was saying subject tests, taking uh, less, you're saying SAT physics. Um, so if you're needing help with that, let me know. Uh, Yash also asked about the ACT. So when it comes to the ACT, yes, there were test dates that were unfortunately canceled, but if you are wanting to take it and you need help, let me know. But yes, if you do have a score that you feel needs to improve, which I would say is like, I mean, if you're getting a 33, 34, 35, 36 guys, like you don't really need to retake it in these times. Like that's a solid score. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, Sunny is asking a great question. Is College Board going to add any more dates? Possibly, yes. I don't have a full answer on that yet. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, so that's, that's something to note. Um, Long asked a really great question. What is the purpose of interviews for universities and applications? Now, this is a really interesting question. We worked with a student named Varenia uh, just in this last cycle, and he applied to all the Ivies, um, and he had interviews actually that uh, were invited within a week of applying with our applications to Harvard and Princeton. Um, and there's a video interview I do with him if you want to take a look at, let me see where it is. It's at, um, it's on my website under testimonials. So if you go to collegeshortcuts.com later under testimonials, you'll see there's this kid who's like a high achiever and pretty introverted, like kind of like doesn't really like video chatting type of guy, but he ended up doing really well on his interviews and he had really unique essays after working with us. We didn't look like everybody else um, in the process. They use the interviews to get a sense of your personality. So like, for example, how good are you in an interview? Like, how will you present, you know, your resume shows you've done all these amazing things. Like, do you, are you really a leader? What do you really like? Like, why do you really want to go here? So those interviews can make all the difference and they will be doing those through Zoom um, for sure in the future. So just heads up on that. Um, so just keep that in mind. 
Um, Ishita, Google free Ivy League classes online. Uh, do you say which college is offered? Just Google that. That's a great source. There's over 450. I tell my kids to do them all the time. And it's really fun to watch because like I had a student who was really interested in uh, aerospace engineering. So technical guys. I was like, oh my God. See, I'm, I just, you guys know, I was an all honors AP kid. I spoke at my graduation. I went to a top private school. My parents were both from India. They did not go to school here. They were attempting to parent me. They were attempting to parent me here. I'll just leave it at that because uh, if my mom watches this later, I'll get a nice little lecture. I'm going to put nice words there because I don't want to hear it from her. Uh, anyway, so, uh, so it was super tough. And I actually didn't realize that like there would still be, I thought like, okay, I'm going to be the last generation that deals with being a first gen. And then I found out there's like all these teens that are still dealing with it. And I'm like, oh my God. So I work with all of these kids because you guys are just like younger versions of me. And I'm like, okay, how can I best support like all the stuff going on? Because my mom was, my parents were always like, education's your golden ticket. You must make all A's all the time. You must make a perfect score. You must be honors in AP. And she like, even to this day is like, I never said that. Okay, whatever. All I have to say is that I know what it can be like to be you and I know how frustrating it can be. And then on top of it to be isolated is why I did this call because I can only imagine what it feels like with trying to balance all this technical stuff. What I will tell you is admissions is still happening. Colleges went to online, many, maybe not all, but many did. They can't afford not to accept y'all next year. Heads up. They need you guys next year, okay? So it's not like admissions is stopping. They're gonna look at everything you did. If you cannot do in-person things, they're gonna look at students like Kavya and like Jennifer that are doing online classes that are maybe starting a business like, you know, some of the other kids that wanna start businesses here, right? Sanath talked about that. So they're gonna find ways to accept students that are taking this time. The second thing I talked about on my webinar last week is that there's going to be a rise in looking at domestic students due to the borders closing. What does that mean? Some schools take five to 8% and some schools will take upwards of 20% international. I mean, I know Samuk just jumped off, but like his school is like 30 to 35% international kids that come. So they're gonna start looking within the domestic range of students. What does that mean? If they can't get the kids typically out of India and China, they're gonna look for them here, okay? Hello, this is a great time to stand out in the admissions process. So yes, you can look at this as, oh my God, my parents are driving me insane. I'm stuck at home, this is so annoying. Or you can be like, whoa, I just got time to focus on my grades, my APs, you know, the SAT, ACT, do well on all of that, plus find some extracurriculars, and I can work on my essays. Like, it's amazing. It's kind of a crazy time and I know it's nutty, but it's kind of a time you can look at if you're a high achiever and be like, okay, what can I do during this time? Um, and in that, what I want to do is, um, I think Ishika, are, are, are you raising your hand? Yes. I think she is. Ishika, can you hear me? I don't know if she can hear me yet. Maybe not. Okay. Uh, so what I want to do, I wanted to answer some of those questions at least. Does anyone have any more questions live? Can I answer a question live? Someone's got their sound on. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Cushy, I'll get to you uh, as the next person. Whoever's got their sound on, I think it's Ishika. Ishika, if you can mute your video, that would be awesome. Just a heads up. Okay. Cushy, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. Hi, Cushy. Hi. Hey. Um, okay. So I just had a question about what basically I should do with my activities going forward now that basically all my high level events have been canceled. Yeah. Okay. So basically what's going to happen is on your resume and on the applications, you are going to state what was going to happen. So they understand. So let's say for example, some students have science, math, Olympiads, debate tournaments that got canceled, internships that got canceled. You will still put that on your applications as, Hey, I just want to let you know, this is the level I got up to as my badass, awesome self. But since those things got canceled, here are all the other things I'm doing instead during my free time virtually. Okay. It doesn't go to crap guys. 
Just because you didn't attend didn't mean you didn't work this hard up until 11th grade and make it happen. Okay. It doesn't go unnoticed just because something came and it canceled it doesn't mean you chose to cancel it. Does that make sense? Right. You still were signed up for it. So you found those opportunities. You were still making it happen. And guys, we don't know. It could end up happening that come end of May, beginning June, things get turned back on. We don't know yet. And I know this uncertainty is driving everybody nuts, but regardless of the uncertainty, we do know you're going to need to fill out applications. You do need to stand out. You do need help with your essays. You do need solid scores. And just like Kavya, Jennifer, and other people are asking, find things online that are going to make you stand out. I actually want to go ahead and unmute, where is she? Jisleen. And I want you to hear from someone who's just one year older than you about things she's doing that I think is just remarkable. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Um, thanks, Cushy, for asking the question. All right, Jocelyn, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Awesome. Hi, um, I'm <coughs> Jocelyn. I'm Jocelyn, and um, I'm from Southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, I was looking through the chat and I saw that a couple of you guys are researchers, and that's me. I've, um, I've always been a researcher. I, my parents have no connections in labs or whatsoever. Um, and beginning freshman year, I started coldly emailing professors um, at my local university, which happened to be Penn. And I got into a couple of Penn labs and with this whole pandemic um, coming along and just like knocking us off our feet, I lost really great research opportunities that were lined up for me. Um, this summer I was getting to work on an original research project. I was gonna be um, managing mice colonies and doing groundbreaking work in immunology and now it's, it was all gone. So when that all shut down, um, I kind of, I stayed home and I was like, okay, I need to find something to do. So what I did was I decided to take an alternative approach to what I do um, and to my interests. And I started this um, service on Facebook. It was just supposed to be for my local community um, where I would deliver groceries for elders because you know you didn't want them going out to the um, grocery shops and getting infected because obviously they're, they're at a higher risk for uh, worse outcomes than younger, younger generations. So it, it was a small platform that really expanded and grew practically overnight. And we had 20,000 people who wanted, who like viewed the page. We had um, news channels that began covering me. And now we've expanded. I think we've done, we've delivered food to about 65 families so far, which, which doesn't sound a lot, but um, I think it's, I think it's making a big difference because it's, 64, uh, 65 families that don't have to go out and be at risk for this infection compared to just me who's just going out and um, doing the shopping for them. So that was, that's how I approached the situation. I didn't want to sit at home and I uh, made, I, you have to make good use of whatever life throws at you. And especially in this pandemic, I knew that I couldn't research practically every single lab was shut down and I couldn't approach um, any other lab mentors because obviously they were concerned about their own lab shutting down and how they would restart again. Yeah. Um, so taking taking on a new person was like not even a question. Like I couldn't I couldn't even approach professors. So I know yeah. a bunch of you are in the same boat. I actually saw a couple of people who were like should be research at like a prestigious university. Um, so for me, I applied early to Penn. And I actually met Neha later in the process after my early notification. Wish I'd met her sooner. I'd probably, I wish yeah. you would just leave. <laughs> I wish I we wish met. I sooner. wish we. I wish we met now. The your year. Yeah, I. It's, yeah. I was deferred from Penn early. Um, even though I'd worked in like three labs, I had letters of rec. I don't think it hurts you if you work at a prestigious lab. But in my application, Justine, can I'm you just also, emphasizing. If you don't mind, Justine, do you mind sharing what your ACT score? where you oh, ranked yeah. in high school, that kind of stuff, just to give them a sense, you know, of where you were at. Yep. Um, I got a 35 composite on my first try, and that was a surprise. That was a pleasant surprise. And um, 
in terms of school ranking, we don't rank, but um, I would say that I'm within the top 2%. Um, I, the school that I go to is not as competitive as other surrounding schools, but uh, it's, I go to a moderately competitive school and I, I would say that I'm within the top 2% of the yeah. population. And um, do you mind sharing, you know, I know that you loved working with our team. A lot of students here may not know what college consulting is. Do you mind sharing kind of the experience you had with us in terms of working with your mentor? Yeah, yeah. So um, when I was working with my mentor, I would provide them or I would write my own drafts, like suppose for um, essays, but I couldn't really figure out how to tie everything together. And I think I think it was Jennifer who was talking about this earlier, just having trouble connecting yourself and presenting yourself because the raw material is there. It's It's like you have to make yourself look pretty on a college application. You have to make it look um, composed. And I think that's what I was having trouble with. And my mentor really helped me with that. She helped me um, put myself together in my essays and she helped me uh, compose myself. Awesome. Yeah. And I know you've applied to a lot of great schools. You're being, you've been getting some great acceptances. So just lean, I'm very proud yeah. of you. I know we chatted, um, you know, this past um, week, just with everything going on directly. Um, do you have anything to say to a lot of the 11th graders that are here? I mean, just, you know, I pulled together from my, uh, you know, just my community. These are some of the most top performing 11th graders, just like you. Um, do you have any advice for them in terms of, you know, they may not have started the admissions process. Um, you know, if you, here's a question just in the chat box real quick. If you've not started drafting your essays for admissions, go ahead and type in um, no, if you have not started the admissions process at all. Um, and that's not a good or bad thing. I just want to ask, like, if you've done them or not. Um, so as you can see, a majority of people just lean have not looked into it. Uh, some people have, but a lot of people haven't. Um, and obviously, you know, it is a little early, but <clears throat> we have a lot of our 11th graders already starting on it since the prompts aren't changing. Yeah. Um, do you have any advice for them or any thoughts of like, hey, you know, you should look into this or ways that you think they can get the best help since it's clearly competitive. You know, you were the mo one of the most competitive kids. You know, your resume was outstanding. Um, any thoughts on how we can help them as much as possible? I think I would definitely say start drafting now because I was a procrastinator, like I would say most of you guys on here. I know, you came and to me in December. <laughs> yes. I looked bad. at your file and I was like, December 17th? <laughs> I was like, I know it because my team doesn't actually take on kids normally after a certain date. And we're probably going to shut our doors in the next few weeks because we're getting so many requests from families. Um, so I think it's really interesting because... <laughs> You came at such a late time, right? And it was, yeah. and I mean, wasn't that a lot of work to get done? It was, it was very stressful. I, and at one point, like college apps were all that I did. I didn't have a life for like, I would say two months, but like it, it all worked out in the end, but you don't have to put yourself through that stress. And I would highly recommend that you get started now because if you write your drafts now, and if you look at them like three months later, you'll see that like, maybe you didn't like something or you'll want to change it because um, like for me, my common app before I started working with Neha was complete, was slightly different, but then my most recent version, when I compared the two, I saw like what a great like change, like what great changes I made and how much better it was. So like working on it and then taking a break and then working on it, I think that's the key to success and just keep editing over and over. Exactly. And would you say that when we did our essays together, they were definitely different than when you did it alone? Oh yes, definitely. I think I was, um, I didn't know, like I knew what I wanted to write, but I didn't know how to write it. And that's- Does anyone, what, um, say yes if anyone knows what she's talking about. So just Lee can feel a little community here if you like know what she's talking about, about like knowing what you want to write, but may not know exactly how to do it exactly. Um, and then just Lee, how many students were to your con counselor at school? Like how, how many, how many people in your grade? We have- 300 something so I think 20 ish people per okay. grade and then we have four counselors wow so um yeah that's like 80 <laughs> kids a counselor yeah we yep. keep our ratios close to five to eight kids per consultant on my team that's like the best if anyone has a lot of students to counselor um 
ratio. Type in yes into the chat box if your counselor has more than five to six students that they work with. Um, because again, students like you, Jocelyn, like my God, you are like such a hardworking kid. And it's like, I don't know, it's just awesome yeah. to even get to talk with you because and share your knowledge with everyone here because I think that's, it's just a true life testament of what these kids are going to have to deal with 12 months from now um, in the admissions process. So I really appreciate you uh, sharing that. Look, Jacqueline just said a thousand to one. Munnan said four counselors for like 2,000 kids. Nee Nir said no counselor. Sophia said 450 to one. I mean, that's crazy, right? Savira has no counselor. I mean, can you imagine, I don't know, just like, can you imagine trying to apply to all the schools we did together no. just on your own? No. Do you I, mind I sharing, can't. do you mind just sharing the list of schools that you applied to so they just get a sense? Yeah. So um, I cast a really wide net. Um, um, I applied early to Penn. I was deferred, and then I applied to Hopkins, MIT, um, Brown, Cornell. Um, sorry, I'm like blanking out. Like it's been a while. <laughs> I'm waiting on decisions. Isn't that My funny, decisions guys? Come you guys out. are all like, "How do you forget that?" No, it's because she's, <laughs> she's in the hangout spot. <laughs> uh, Princeton, Stanford. No, wait, not Stanford. Sorry, I'm. It's okay. Like, Obviously, you know. it's okay. <laughs> Sorry, Princeton. I put you on the spot there. It was a lot no, of hard. No, it's okay. Right? It was a lot of hard schools. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So as you guys can see, um, say yes if you guys are going to be looking at similar schools as Jocelyn applied to. Just type in yes. So Jocelyn, I'm so grateful for you taking the time. I know we talked on Friday about this and I said, look, you know, I've, I've decided I've never done this before. I want to see all these teenagers and I want to put them on a face to face. I was planning on yeah. doing events in different cities. That was actually part of my strategy this year, guys, was to get to mm -hmm. meet you guys all in real life. I was going to do one in the Bay area, Houston, obviously, uh, New Jersey and LA. And unfortunately, you know, uh, with everything going on, I couldn't. So I said, well, how do I best serve you to the highest heart fulfillment I could? So Jocelyn, I'm so glad you could share your experience with us and how, yeah. you know, different it was before when you were doing it versus mm -hmm. when you started working with us. Um, and I wish you all the best of luck, of course. Thank so you. Glad, Thank you know, you. so glad. And I really am, I just want to say I'm so proud of you for, you know, helping the elderly and doing this type of project. So a lot of these kids, you know, are listening and saying, wow, like, oh, there are things I could do in my own community maybe, or yeah ways I could maybe even connect with them or you could, you know, write them letters or, you know, there's all sorts of ways, right? There's all sorts of ways to help. And so you're of just course. a real, a beacon of hope for our community, uh, being in 12th grade and doing this kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, so thanks Jocelyn for jumping on. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, okay guys. Okay. Yes. Show, yes. Yes. I'm going to unmute you. Yes, Sweeney. Hi. Yes, Sweeney. Um, Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, where are you calling from? Uh, Jersey City, New Jersey. Okay, awesome. Um, I was going to ask, uh, when colleges look at your GPA, do they consider like how different schools weight AP classes really differently? Um, could you ask that one more time? Um, when colleges look at your GPA, do they consider how different schools weigh AP classes differently? Um, so in terms of, you know, colleges and when they're looking at GPA, there's obviously like weighted and unweighted, uh, but a lot of colleges know the different schools that you guys are at, um, you know, specifically like if you're at private schools or public schools or if they've accepted students, so they get a sense of where your GPA falls based on students from your school last year. Um, but I would say that, you know, what they're really looking at as well is your transcript. Are you a student that takes honors in AP classes? Are you a student... Um, that doesn't take honors and AP classes, right? Like, so they're going to really look at like what's on the transcript and what type of grade you made in each class. Mm -hmm. um, but it really depends on the school for sure. Um, also guys in the chat, I just want to let you know, I'm like looking at it. If you guys can please take it seriously, I'd really appreciate it. Um, this is really a place for you to be able to ask uh, a question. Um, if you're not able to do that, we can go ahead and just like stop the chat. <laughs> um, but it's kind of distracting for me and I probably, I think for everybody else. So if you guys don't mind, uh, just respecting uh, the community we're creating here um, to go ahead and just ask a question if you have one, um, and then we'd be more than happy to answer it. That'd be greatly appreciated. Um, okay, Yoshwini. So yeah, so it's basically about the transcripts and the um, types of classes and the types of grades you're making, and then they're calculating it based on that as well. 
So just okay. keep that in mind. I have a few more questions. Sure. So, I'm a little confused because I wasn't like born in America. Now I have my green card either. So when I applied to college, am I like 